It happens very often that I find a part of myself resonating with some character. However, even then it rarely ever happens so deep that it brings me to tears. Reagan had always been a big part of why I loved Mob Psycho so much. And so, my appreciation of his character made me even more sadder when he got slandered by the mass media. Seeing this charismatic person who always handled the situation with his wits and zing being cornered and punched down made me feel uncomfortable. It felt like I was underwater, suffocating, trying to inhale the last breath of air possible. From the very beginning of the show, the way Reagan did things has always been in a grey area where he is scamming people into believing that he was a psychic but he never scammed them of their troubles. He took the advantage of people who believed in psychics and supernatural phenomena and got them to hire him and solve their problems for them for a very reasonable price. Whereas as if they had gone to some other psychic, they would have swindled them completely and leased them for their money. In episode 7, Reagan is set up for failure in front of a live audience by Jodo because of his grudge against Reagan for knee striking him. Jodo sets up Reagan by telling him to exercise a possessed kid who Reagan from the very beginning realized was an actor. Reagan being unaware of Jodo's true intentions went with the flow of the program and gave a performance in the confidence that the actor would play along. However, things did not go as he had assumed they would and in the end, Jodo showed his true color and unfolded his scheme by putting Reagan on the spot and turning audience against him by questioning his psychic abilities. This scene somehow managed to not get cringe as it is common occurrence to see a character being subject to face the music turning cringe by making the viewer uncomfortable by inducing them with the feeling of watching a person publicly make a fool of himself and being subjected to public shaming and slander. The aftermath of the live broadcast ended up with people on the SNS making fun of Reagan and spreading false accusation of fraud and being scammed by him. The aftermath is also a social commentary by one on how people on the internet just love to engage in slandering and dragging a person's name through the mud when given the opportunity to and how they can give a person the image of the ultimate evil for the very smallest thing in a matter of few days. In this, they also showed how alone Reagan was as the people he thought would trust him turned against him when the slides were flipped. Not even his family believed him. Now, the real part which broke me down was during the press conference. Each and every aspect of the press conference resonated with me. Not giving a shit about the drama going around you after it had been stretched for so long or for any situation that had been a burden on you. Not giving a fuck at the very last moment is a very human thing to happen. Questioning that why is it even happening? Why do people care about it so much? What is its meaning in the grand scheme of things? And when you come up with an answer for all of it and it is just null. You don't give a damn about it anymore. At that moment, you are at your most vulnerable pure and true state of mind. You are either invincible or completely defenseless, depending on who you are. In this situation, Reagan manages to keep his composure and answer everything very calmly until a reporter brings up Reagan's old graduation essay which said, I want to be somebody. At that moment, his mind went completely blank like an empty canvas with nothing painted on it. We all want to be somebody in our lives. We all want to be remembered by people for our work and achievements. When people get far in their lives, they tend to look back at things that have happened to see where they started and how far they have come. But as someone who left everything from his past and wanted to move on from it, this type of retrospective thinking is very mentally detrimental and emotionally 
tolling. This can either make you or break you. You can either stay in an emotional slump, keep on self-loathing or you can get yourself together and move forward. If you manage to get yourself out of this hole and get your act together, you will be a much stronger person than you previously were. Not because you miraculously just became a better person, but because you are now willing to put effort and work towards a better you. Some people can do it by themselves. However, some people might need a catalyst for them to improve and keep moving while looking forward. That catalyst can be anything from a person to an object. Reagan would have already given up on psychic business long ago, but he kept on going not for himself but for a little and lost kid that came to him looking for help. If Reagan was by himself, he would have given up a long time ago. But he kept on moving for Mob's sake. There was some part of greed mixed in there, but there was also some part of care and desire to protect Mob which kept him going. In the flashback, Reagan talks about how he was ready to give up on the psychic business, but then Mob came through his door. At first, Reagan thought that it was just a kid playing a prank on him because it is a thing that kids do. But then he heard Mob talk more and he realized how Mob was genuinely troubled. So he invited Mob to listen to his trouble. As Reagan started to talk to Mob, he saw a scared little kid who needed someone who would listen to his troubles. At first he thought that Mob was a kid who was trapped in his own fantasy world and could not differentiate between reality and imagination. So he gave him some advice to lessen his troubles, which is one of my favorite quotes. Listen, just because you have psychic powers doesn't make you different from other people. It's the same as people who are fast, people who are good at studies and people with strong body odor. Psychic powers are just another characteristic. You just embrace that part of yourself and continue to live positively. The truth behind one's charm is kindness. Become a good person. That is all. Even if Reagan was trying to get Mob to go back home, he subconsciously gave him genuine advice which made Mob comfortable with who he was. Making someone feel comfortable with whom they are is a very kind and nice thing to do. People should be more understanding and open to helping other people who are troubled and need a helping hand. Now when Reagan sees that Mob actually has powers, he takes him under his guidance. Even if his intention at first was to use Mob's power for his own benefit, he subconsciously helped Mob out with controlling his powers and develop. Now as Reagan was contemplating his life and reflecting on how he had held Mob back from his youth and the way he treated him, he thought what he wanted to tell Mob. You've grown so much, you know that? These words not only expressed how much he was proud of Mob, but they also were words of apology and realization that Mob was no longer dependent on him as much as he used to be. Then Mob helped Reagan by secretly using his powers and causing a ruckus in the press conference which gave Reagan a window to get out of there and clear his name. As Reagan got out of there, he finds Mob nearby and asks him why he was there and Mob says, just because. Then Reagan asks Mob that, does he know who he truly is? Mob answers, いいやつだ。腹減ったな。ラーメンでも食って帰るか。はい。師匠誕生日おめでとうございました。<音楽>